of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I welcome us to the weekend edition of the Destiny Prayer Altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before we enter the heat of the morning, we must understand one thing about prayer, especially praying the Holy Ghost. Prayer is spiritual detoxification. Prayer is spiritual detoxification. And, uh, detox, all this, uh, people know English, you understand detoxification. Hallelujah. Satan or the world system is on a rampage of feeding and filling us with things or accumulating debt on us to the point that before you know what is happening, you are overwhelmed with sin. You are overwhelmed with uh, evil thoughts. You are overwhelmed with all manner of evil desires. Uh, sin does not manifest overnight. Is built over time, especially in the life of a spiritual person. When you are spiritual, sin does not just jump on you overnight. You don't just enter sinning overnight. No, it builds up. It builds up. So Satan keeps building up that fire. He keeps building up that desire, and then. It keeps mounting, mounting, mounting. Before you know what's happening, you're on the floor. Bible said in, in Judges chapter 16 about uh, this man, Samson. Bible said in verse 16, it came to pass that as she was pressing him continuously, continuously, that Samson was weary unto death. So he gave up and told that lady the secret of his life. Satan kept mounting pressure. That's what Satan does. He keeps mounting pressure. He keeps... For instance, to get a, a, a man of God, a believer, a strong believer to fall, what Satan does is that you go, you go out, let's say you're in a taxi going to preach or going somewhere, you sit by a lady who is with a very short knicker, and maybe her thighs are showing, her breasts are showing. So, somewhere, somewhere, somehow your eyes see it, and then shh, you remove your eye. That's not about that. That's all he needs you to see. Just see the thighs, see the breast. that's all. After some time again, you are going to see a billboard. The breast is showing one somewhere it shows some people are kissing naked on the billboard you are going your eyes see a movie or a video you satan just accumulates all those energies over time it can be one year he's not bothered satan is very patient very very patient it can be one year he's not patient he's not bothered he accumulates all those things over one year then one day he presents you with a golden opportunity and he begins to play those pictures in your mind before you notice it you're on the floor that is why we pray continuously. The moment Satan show you that first picture, but because you are in a prayer mood, you are praying continuously. Whatever that, you wipe it off. It comes again, another one, you wipe it off. So consistently, your, your, your mind is on a 247 clean service. That's how you read, you read Satan. So prayer, continuous prayer, everyday prayer has a lot of benefit to us. Especially praying the Holy Ghost has a lot of benefit. I, I taught somewhere last year on men ought always to pray about 12 editions of men ought always to pray. They, are, they have nothing to do with asking for running water. They need to pray always. Why must I pray always? If I'm not asking for bread, some people, if it's not prayer for need for one thing or the other, they can't pray again. They can't pray. Oh, let's pray for husband and wife. They can pray. Because they don't understand the men ought always to pray dimension of prayer. This is one of that dimension. Prayer is spiritual detoxification. When Satan accumulates energies on you, you, you detox in the prayer room. If you don't do that, a time comes that Satan just initiates his desires before he notices he's on the floor. And he says, ah, this man has fallen. He didn't fall overnight. He was building energy over time. Nobody falls overnight in a Christian faith. Nobody. Everybody falls over time. Over time. There is nothing concerning for in the kingdom. No, it's built over time. 
So when you understand the mystery and the ministry of prayer, everyday prayer, men ought always to pray. If you understand that dimension, what happens is that the moment Satan put one block, you destroy it. He put one block, you destroy it. He put, he will leave you alone. He'll be tired. He will go and visit some people else. That is how we pray. Listen, people of God, we are ending a season in a Christian faith whereby many, many struggle before him. He's not even saying it. It's in the scriptures. See, the last days, men shall be lovers of themselves. And people shall be falling. Even the very elect shall be deceived. One of the ways to keep you standing is the ministry of personal prayers. Personal prayer authors. The ministry. The disciples said, we'll give ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the world. You are not praying because you need things from God. You know, no, 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 no. That is the lowest ever prayer. You are praying to keep alive. What did Jesus need from God? He never went to pray for anything, but he was praying. He was a praying savior. He was a praying savior. So we don't pray because we have need. We pray because we need to pray. Men ought always to pray. He didn't put any need there. Men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. So you don't pray because you need. You have a need. You pray simply because you 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 must pray. It's a life of the kingdom. It's a need of the kingdom for your spiritual life to have effect. Everybody have dreams and desires for the year already. I don't know how many people have drawn a spiritual plan for the year. All we do is, oh God, oh God, just make sure you are blessing me. Just make sure my job comes. My dear. What, what about the spiritual plan for the year? What is your spirit? That is why many believers fall. Fall. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So understand that prayer is spiritual detoxification. That is just by the way, actually. Let us turn our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 48. We were exploring. Let's go to 58, you know, 58 first. Our anchor scripture for what we are doing in this series. We began to explore fasting and prayer, the benefit of fasting in a believer's life. Praise the Lord. Verse 6 says, Not this the fast I have chosen. So God has a chosen fast. Then, in verse 11, he said, And the Lord shall guide thee continually. And we said yesterday that divine guidance is the ultimate need of any man. If you are not guided, you are not guarded. If you are not guided, you are not. You are only safe in the center of divine guidance. It is where God guides you to that he follows you to. You guide yourself anywhere. You, you save yourself there. You cannot save yourself. You cannot save yourself. So, divine guidance, the best of life, answers in the center of divine guidance. Until God is leading, you cannot find yourself lying by the cool waters. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You will want if you are leading yourself. Don't tell God to supply your needs if he is not leading you. No. The shepherd can only be held accountable for the sheep he is leading. So if you are not a sheep being led by God, you are accountable to yourself. The year is still very young. Many people have just drawn out plans that they don't know where they got it from. If you see someone's plan, you ask yourself, where is God? Where is God? They've loaded it with the I want, I desire. Now, what does God want? You don't ask those questions. What does God want? You've drawn plans. You've not consulted the one who holds your life. What does, what is God saying? Father, what is your plan for the year? What are you saying? We dealt with that in December, so I don't need to go there again. What is the Lord saying about the year? No, we just go about, I want to buy a car, I want to buy a house, I want this one, I want this one, I want it. We draw all manner of plans, forgetting that life is not in our plan. And then we end, we end up as the rich fool. Who go about my soul, relax, I have enough to eat, just sleep, don't worry. Forget, anybody can die, but you relax. And God said, hey, you are calling the soul to your own. I, you see, what angered God is not because the man had money or had enough to eat. He said, my soul. The soul did belong to you. 
God said, okay, I want my soul back. Let me see how you, you eat the food. Consulting God is the highway to distinction in life. Consulting God. Praise God. So, in the midst of prayer and fasting, that is where you secure divine guidance. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. We dealt with that a lot yesterday. So, please, I don't need to go there. Those of you who missed out, Jesus is Lord. The Lord give you understanding. Now, Isaiah 48 verse 21. He said, And they tasted not when he led them through the desert. So if God is the one leading, it doesn't matter where you find yourself, whether desert, Afghanistan, whatever it is, if it is the Lord leading, if God leads you out of a job, don't worry yourself. People can pity you. Don't pity yourself. If God says stop this job, don't worry yourself. You are up going. You are going up. God never leads downward. So he said, he tasted, they tasted not when he led them through the wilderness. They were going through the desert, but they were not tasted. Why? God led them. God led them. So if you're not tasked in the year 2021, please set it down in this January and secure divine guidance. Lord, what are you saying? What is the year about? Vedula the child of Palagasis. What are you saying, Jesus? These are the things I'm thinking. But what are you saying? You hold the master plan of life. What are you saying? God can see the, your entire lifetime like in a time sheet. You can only see today. You don't know nothing about tomorrow. So consulting God is very vital. But our prayer is not focused there today. Our prayer is focused on something else. Let's go to verse 17 of Isaiah 48. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Isaiah 48, 17, he said, Thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which seated thee to profit. We lead thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Verse 18. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandment, then had thy peace be as the river, and thy righteousness as the way of the sea. Verse 19. Thy seed also had been as a son, and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Verse 20. That is my emphasis. Verse 20. Going forth of Babylon, flee ye from the Chaldeans with the voice of singing. Declare ye, tell this, tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. Say ye, the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. Now, he said, go ye from Babylon, flee ye from the Chaldeans. That is the only way the Lord can guide you in the wilderness without you being in lack of Babylon is from the root word Babel. It means mixture. This one small, this one small, this one small, this one small. Babel, it means mixture. It came from Genesis chapter 11 when God mixed their voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the word Babylon is from the root word Babel. It means this one small, this one small, this one small. This one small. Now, when you read Deuteronomy chapter 32 from verse 9 to 14, uh, somewhere verse 10, 11 is there. And the Lord alone did lead him. Hmm. The Lord alone did, the Lord alone did lead him. The Lord alone did lead him. If the Lord alone, what a, if anything else is leading you apart from the Lord alone, forget it. You, 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 you will be found wanting. The Lord is my shepherd, not the Lord and something else. Not the Lord in the economy of Ghana. The Lord is my shepherd. Until he is the sole leader of your life, don't expect to enjoy his sole blessings. Don't expect. Don't expect. Many of us have many, many things that is leading on. We go to, we flee this over to see all those demonic, they call it, how they call it, that in a, you know, your, your month of birth and then all those kind of things. Uh, Satyrus, Tarius, Leo, uh, Capricorn. It's demonic, it's satanic. You go look for this is for guidance. Palm reading. For guidance. Let's see your palm. Okay, these are cards. Tarot cards. 
Now it's on the internet for free. Taraska for Gaida. You are swallowing up your destiny in hell. Engaging in those things. You are just meddling with demonic spirits. Engaging in those forces. The Lord alone did lead him. If anything else leads you apart from the Lord alone, you, you, you cannot. He said, flee him from the child years. Come out of Babylon. Don't let anything, any so-called powerful man or woman or thing somewhere lead you. Let the Lord alone lead you. So, we secure divine guidance and the blessing of it on the fasting altar. Primarily, when we make God alone the ruler, the chief matron of our life, the man who is leading the way. The psalmist said, I think it's in the, I don't know the way through the wilderness. Jesus is the way I must follow. I don't know the way through the wilderness. He got it so right. He got it so right. The reason we end up in frustration most of the time is because something else is leading our father, the Lord alone. Something else. Something else. We say, okay, no, the Lord is my shepherd, but it's a lie. You know that something else, somewhere is leading you. Something leading you. Hey, God, you let me, the thing crash. You know it's a lie. God didn't lead you alone. Something else led you. Something has led you. God never lead a man to a crash. Never. Anywhere I have hit the wall, I led myself. Oh boy. Anywhere he led me into, I am breaking forth on every side. Breaking forth. When God leads the way, you are sure to lead in life. But when you are leading yourself, only God can... Uh, <laughs> Friends, the year is young. I would like to encourage us. Let's not waste our life leading ourselves. You don't know. You have never seen 2021 before. Never. Even if they replay 2020, the abilities you forget. You have never seen 2021 before. The one who knows it from the beginning is called God. Wisdom is to go to him. Wisdom is to go to him. In Hebrew 6, so they follow them who through faith and patience obtain. In this one, no, only God you can follow. <laughs> he is the only one who has followed and has obtained. So follow him. Follow him. If your money is leading you, you are in trouble. If your academics is leading you, you are in trouble. I heard of a sort of a man who resigned a job because another company came to push him. Very powerful company to push him. They doubled his salary. He, man, he jumped from this work, entered that place. In three months, a new company closed down. He became jobless for 10 years. 10 years! He never asked God. The old company is still there, flourishing, growing gradually. He left them to so many of the double his salary. In three months, the company closed down and then he became jobless for 10 years. His family went through gruesome experiences. All because he could not secure guidance from God. You don't know anything. You better ask God. I know nothing. We better ask God. Lord, what's your plan? What are you saying? What is it for this year? You go to God. Meloma, Shiale, Rabula, Tisano, Akabaya. Jesus, what is your plan for 2021? What 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 is your drive? What is your focus? You jump around frustrating yourself. You will not be frustrated. Our prayer today, Holy Ghost, anything inside me leading me. <laughs> Apart from you, I let them go. Simple prayer. Anything in my life leading me apart from you. Jesus, I despise them. I follow you alone. I don't want any mischief. I don't want any other voice leading me. He said, the Lord alone did lead him. Jesus, you alone will lead me this year. Only you will guide me this year. Omit yourself. Only you will guide me this year. Only you, Jesus, will guide me this year. Dear Rose, rise to your feet. Your voice, let's pray. Rise to your feet. Those are family online, please. No sleeping, no dozing. Unmute yourself and let's pray. 
Les monavalika jaria mais les caros quoi les balakas quoi tas. Veris kunapalo ravanieli sisara de uzole ba.